Hello and welcome this afternoon to Riverside Crafts. I'm Ray and I'm going to be showing you how I've made this card today. Um, I've used stamp by from Woodware by Jane Gill um, and I'm using a sort of a highlighting technique by using the only colouring in the tag and leaving the rest in black and white. I'm going to show you where I start um, and the papers that I'm going to be using because I'm going to be colouring with alcohol markers. This means that I should be using um, Nina Solar White cardstock, which is a super smooth cardstock, which is designed specifically for using with alcohol markers. And I'm also going to be stamping directly onto the cardstock as well. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, right. first things first, let me get a piece of paper. Right, I'm going to just cover my card a second that I want to put a stamp on just for a moment while I put a stamp on it because my stamps probably aren't perfectly clean clean because I've, I've used them quite a lot so they're sort of not 100% clean so I'm just going to push it down slightly so it's sort of sitting centrally on my cardstock. Can you see how I've got a little bit of my stamp sitting off the edge because that will help when I come to doing and making it look more like it should do. I was going to take this piece out for a second. Actually, I'm going to stamp that piece first. I just remember what I did. Oh dear, one of those mornings. Right, I'm just going to ink it up quite lightly at the moment because this is to help me um, match things in in a little bit. And I'm using Memento, which is a water-based dye ink, so that it won't bleed with my alcohol markers. Right, so I'm just put that bit there. I'm going to go back the same. I'm going to do it again now on the cardstock, but that's my like my register. So it's the, the my marking bit so that when I come to move my stamp, I've got an idea of where I'm moving it to in a minute. Okay, so I'm just giving that nice good coverage of my ink. Okay, that's giving me a really nice finish just there. So I'm just going to put line that back up there for a moment and because I know I've just re-inked this I've got to be careful when I move it because the last thing I want is it all to be putting ink where you don't need it so I'm going to be sort of like lining it up again so that it's keeping it nice and level I'm just going to put the stamp there and you can see how that's going to mix in so I'm not too worried about that one. Take off my piece of paper. I'm just going to slide it under so I don't put ink on everything else. No, that's not going to work because I've just moved everything. Didn't I? I just moved it all. Put it back. I'm not concentrating. Okay, that back there a second. Just line that up again, make sure that's lined in properly. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to take this off, put it to one side, put my magnet back on. Just going to tap up sort of the end bit here so I've not got so much ink everywhere. Okay. Okay, so now you can see that actually it flows really well and you don't notice that you've got um, a joint in your stamping. It just gives you a really nice sort of sort of border all the way across. Okay, so I've just done that. Now I'm going to stamp my tag, which I've pre-cut using um, the Riverside Crafts tag dies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up where it is I think I'm going to want to put my tag, which I'm going to do possibly over where my join is because that's the best place for me to hide um, what I'm doing but I'm going to pick another part of the stamp to bring it over to sort of hide things so I'm going to sort of put myself there okay so I'm just going to put a little bit of a bit on that one okay I'm going to lay my stamp where I think if I want it to be like so Oops. pick it up Put some more ink on it. Okay. 
Right. That's my stamping all done. So that's my tag stamped. And now I'm going to do is colour it. Um, now, I'm going to start off um, with some of the other colours rather than just starting in red. So I'm going to start off with some of my, my browns and my greys um, to give me a sort of a more um, toadstool-y type feel. So I'm just going to put some of these bits in here. I'll just take my time. When you're using um, alcohol markers, one of the nice things is that you've You've got a little bit of time to play. So if, if the doorbell goes and you walk away and leave it, it's not the end of the world. You can come back to it another day or in, a, in an hour's time and it will still blend. So you don't have to feel that you are losing out um, because you've moved and it's sort of not going to blend in the same way. Which is quite good. Put that one there. Like so. So I'll do that one as well. And this one here. This one's going to need a bit more colour in it there. And a little bit probably just there. Okay. And we're going to go back in with this one. Right. So I'm going to pick up some purpley tones. Um, because I'm going to just do the, the toadstools that haven't got any dots on them. So I'm just going to pick up some purpley ones. Okay. Now all alcohol markers work very similarly. So you're literally just picking up some colour, adding in a slightly darker tone, um, and then blending it into it. It just helps with it to sort of give it a bit more of a, of a feel for what you're doing. Now, I'm not spending hours and hours on colouring this. It really is just going to be a basic, um, quick colour because you've got time to do other things as well. So and the way that the card is, it helps with it just being nice and simple. So it makes it look a bit more, which is good. Hope you've all been enjoying the sunshine today because it's been lovely. Right, which has been makes a change from the winds we've just we've been having. So have really a nice little bit of sunshine is quite pleasant. I hope you've all seen the recent new class lists coming out because a lot of us tutors are now returning and doing classes again, which is really cool. It's nice to be back in the classroom. And sharing skills with everyone. I'll just do another white key one over here. As you can see, that's my mushrooms. And like I said, I'm not doing lots of really intricate blending. Okay. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to do my red ones, but I'm going to, as you can see, the dots are really close together, so it's going to be very difficult not to go into them. But so I'm not going to panic too much about being absolutely perfect, because I have a trick that I use a bit later to help me um, put my white dots back in if I need to, because um. They're not the easiest of things to keep where you want them when it's they are so close and it's so detailed. So I'm just going to put a little bit of red where I need it. I'm just going to dot it in the areas where it's going to be difficult to sort of blend it around things. Okay, so that's one bit done. Okay, so I'm just going to put some dark red on the edges because this will just help to give it a bit of shape. Okay, okay, we've got it going up there. I'm going to put some on this side and go up with it again. I'm just going to blend that a minute. Some there in there. Get that blend while it's doing. And I'm going to go and do this one. Do the same. This is quite good. 
I have to say, I think this is one of my favourite stamps. So I use it to do a lot of different things with. Um, and I, I like using it on craft card as well, because it gives a totally different feel for what you're doing. So you'll probably see some more bits than with this one over time, because I do like this particular stamp. It works really well with the gnomes as well, which is nice. Right, so that's my red bits done for now. Right, now I'm going to do some green. So I've obviously got leaves and things on here. So I'm going to start doing some greeny bits. I'm only going to be putting one colour on each chair in. I'm not going to try and blend these out. These are just too small for me to mess around with today. So I'm not going to try and blend them. I'm just going to leave them as they are and just colour them in. Making the most of the fact that the actual um, pens don't um, give you a nice smooth finish. They don't, you don't get any juddering with them, which is nice. That's about it on grass. Do this one here. Darker. Let's see, these ones are with a darker green as well. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm just going to get a, a bluey colour to do these dots here. I'm literally just going to dot it in. I thought blue would be quite nice today. Add in a different colour. Okay. Some yellow to go in the middle of our flowers and to do some other bits with. So that one there's yellow, that bit there, and that bit there. And we'll do the middle of the daisies yellow. That's looking good. A little bit of orange. Actually, I'm going to put orange on those because it looks a little bit more. Yeah, I prefer the orange. Right, make this flower orange. Okay, a bit of pink. Let's do some pink. And I think these will be pink as well. Okay. Now, we've got a dark pink here to go around the edge of the flower. And I think we've got some blue, more blue bits to put down here. We've done pink, that's what we like blue. Do it blue, pick up the right pen. Okay, and then we're going to do. Um, let me just have a look. A little bit more of a brighter lilac y thing on this one, a bit more sort of definite purple. Okay. So that's coloured in pretty much most of what I was looking at. Got a few leaves here to just finish off. And there, finish off. That will do that quite nicely. Now I'm going to show you how I put my white in. Now I cheat. These are brilliant. These are Posca pens and they just make life really simple. So if you've got a white bit and you're struggling to get it to colour it, you know, to get a bit that you need to keep white but you can't do it, if you have one of these you can add it in. Quite good. Oh, come on, you. I need to give it a bit more of a shake. And you give them a different, give them a good old shake, and there we go. This one's nice and really got nice white. And they're white acrylic paint, so they cover everything. So it just gives you your, your white dots back quite nicely. So if you're struggling and you're not a, a perfectly tidy 
colour having a Posca pen to add in your white is a good thing it helps to hide all those bits that you lose so that's that bit done okay now I'm obviously going to put this here somehow um, just to give it a bit of a colour but it's, it's going to blend in too much it's not white but I also want to put some um, stressing around it to lift it as well so I'm just going to get my blending mat okay and I've got um, speckled egg here one of my favourite colours and I'm using a, a blending brush because it's nice and easy okay and go from there Okay, so that's that bit done, sorted, lay it onto some black card, oh, we seem to have an issue with the internet, I'll just go over it um, again quickly, I used a Posca pen to add in my white dots and I'm just going to go and put a little bit of the speckled egg this just sinks around the edge so that it sort of stands out from the white card background okay so I do apologize if this has dropped out on you can't do a lot about it today one of those things a little bit of glue would be good which we seem to have okay some glue And I'm just going to put it onto my black card. Okay, so I'm just placing it on my black card like so. And I'm going to use my gelatin to just trim off the excess a second. So here we go. Trim off my excess. go so that's my tag which is going to sit just here now I've got my sentiment pre-stamped I'm just going to do show you what I've just done with that there we go so this is pre-stamped and I'm just going to cut into it so it looks like a flag and I'm going to brush myself a little bit of ink on it So it's a little bit blue because that will help it stand out. Now the sentiment is from um, another stamp. Um, it's also one of the toad stalls. Um, and this one is also a really nice stamp. I use a lot and they work really well in conjunction with each other. But I just really like the sentiment on this. So that's what I thought I'd use today. Okay, I'm just going to get myself a, a black fine liner and put a few sort of fake stitches around this Okay, so I've got my faux stitching around that. So I'm just going to put some foam tape along the back here. Like this, a little bit on this. Okay, pokey tool to just get myself a little bit of 
twine out. So I'm just going to put my poker tool through the hole. So that's that bit. Okay, twine would be good. Cut a piece off. Now to get the twine through, I'm really good. I'm going to fold it in half. Put the two ends together and then just very gently work it through hopefully it'll go might need to put a little bit of glue on the ends of that just to hold them and make it tighter so just literally going to put a little bit of glue on to turn that into like a little needle so it just sort of holds it all together and then it just pokes through really easily as you can see put it through my loop trim off my excess including that bit that I've just done for backing from the foam tape. Add that in here for a minute. Okay, so put my tag in and put a slight joint angle on this one because it's slightly larger cardstock. Poke this underneath. And there we go. A finished card. I'm sorry about the intermission. I've got no idea what went wrong there. But we will see what we can sort out. And hopefully we won't have that same problem next time. So I'm hoping you like the card. The stamp is, again, from Woodware by Jane Gill. The tag is from the Riverside Crafts that range of dies, um, which, is, which is lovely. And it has its own little stitch detail already on it. Um, and again, I've just used a Posca pen to highlight my white dots and that I can, go, I can go over them a couple of times if I'm not happy um, and just add it in so it gets whiter and that and just take my time to get them white as I want them and go for there it just helps me when I'm not so good at getting the colouring because I've got little gap the gaps aren't big enough I'll just use a Posca pen to just highlight and tidy up and that so here we go here's the other one so you can see how just slightly different in sizes, but it works in both ways, and I hope you like it. Thank you for joining me today and for watching. Um, and I hope that you've had um, you've enjoyed it. So I will catch up with you next week when I will be doing this one, um, which is a creative expression stamp. Um, and then I should be showing you some stenciling. Um, colouring with distress inks and um, sort of just playing with the stamps really so I hope you enjoy and I'll get to see you next week thank you very much bye